All right, good evening, everyone. This is a uh, meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Uh, it's um, May 24th. 24th. Yep. 24th. It's a uh, call to order at 640. Um, everybody on board, ready to roll. First order of business. Minutes of uh, May 10th and May 17th. Uh, motion on the minutes. I second. Hey, we can hear Crystal tonight. Nice. Yes. Excellent. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to accept the minutes as presented for May 10th and May 17th. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Jeffrey, we got a 3-0 vote on that. Next up is the new business is the state mosquito spring opt-out discussion. Is this going to be a, do we need a lot of discussion on this or... Uh, David, Crystal, what's your thoughts? I, I I looked through the draft. I think that's that seems to be good. I mean, you know, I think we we all kind of seem to be on the same page about like aerial spraying. You know, that it's like an absolute last resort kind of thing. You know. Okay, Crystal, what are your thoughts? Pretty much the same. I mean, there you know there plenty of information there, and if you know, spring is an absolute last resort. Well, it might be the direction we have to go, but I don't, I'm not really in favor of just spring for the heck of it. Yeah. All right, so Jeff, we opt out. What do we have for uh, our, what's our backup plan? Um, well, we're gonna do the, the mosquito management plan. Um, we need to sign that and submit it to the state. They need to accept it. Um, and if, if there is an arborovirus discovered, then we would have to figure out how to handle it um, and pay for it. And we would have to hire a private contractor. Um, you could take a vote to only opt out of aerial spraying, and then we might be able to get the state to come in with a truck or a backpack. Um, but that, that would only be, again, if, if we discovered Triple E or Zika or um, West Nile in town. Okay, are we also are we also looking going to continue to look uh, Chris Owen Dave? Are we also going to continue to look at the Mosquito uh, District? The district. Yeah, I mean, what do you think, Crystal? I think the district is going to provide us with some information. It's going to give us some good stuff about areas where we have potential issues and stuff. Um, I don't know if we're going to get quite that level of detail from the state. I know. And we've got a little input, too, into like where the testing is done and everything. It seems more like customizable, you know, in that sense. Yeah. Caitlin, what does the Board of Health think? It was, what, 5000 a year, I think, right? 5000 Um. I think that the um, we would definitely probably have a little more control if we were part of the district. You know, we um, the benefit is the savings in money. Uh, you know, spraying is spraying. You know, there the state isn't going to come in and spray everywhere. You know, they'll spray where they're going to come in and do a survey, then spray. So it's not like they're going to just dump napalm all over our town <laughs> you know the state has their they have their management and they have their goals and they have their uh you know um oversight but um so i mean you know they're not they're going to keep it to the lowest threshold possible also but their lowest threshold possible is usually not the same as maybe what we would like to say our lowest threshold possible would be. So um, I think we would have more control, and, but you pay for it. You pay for that kind of control. So it's a cost benefit analysis. Um, I don't think this, the state doesn't, isn't nefarious. They don't mean harm. Um, they're here to get the job done and to, and to do it with the least possible harm. So um, I think that if we get the um did we do we have stuff I, I didn't review anything from 
the mosquito control board. Yep. You, yeah, we do. You do. Okay. Yep. So, you know, if you, if you guys reviewed it, I mean, I've been doing a lot of COVID stuff. So if so, you guys reviewed it. So Caitlin, I, I think the biggest thing with the mosquito, um, the mosquito district, the Pioneer Valley mosquito district is that the, the biggest thing that they're doing is that they're coming in throughout the summer um, testing they set up traps and they do testing throughout the summer. And basically, I, from talking to uh, surrounding communities that belong to the district, they believe that they, they were, they're able to get the data that's necessary so that if, if Triple E or Zika or West Nile is found in the area, they, they, at that point, they, with the data that they have in hand, they have a better availability to talk on a firmer footing with the state about where things, where, where spraying is necessary and what kind of spraying is necessary also. You know, is it backpack? Is it is it uh, truck mounted? And so in, instead of just, like you said, but you, everything would be based on the information. Right. So, and, and for us, I, I, you know, maybe, maybe we try it for a year or two to see what we have. And we can, after that, we can make a determination but I, I, I think what we heard last week from both David and, and Crystal was that they're not adverse to having data to make a decision. Uh, I think we can make a more informed decision if we've got more information, so. Right. Okay. So, yeah. But yeah, I'm for, I'm not, I'm not against it in any way. I just, when it was brought up directly to us, it was coming out of our budget and we did a cost benefit analysis and, you know, we weren't being pushed the way you guys are though, you well, know as far as make a decision now. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so Jeff. So we kicked the can. To be so so I guess right, right now, what we're, what we're looking to do is we will look for a, a vote to opt out. If we do opt out of the aerial spraying portion of it, we have a, we have a plan that we are going to submit to the state, right? Correct. And, at, and then at the same time, um, when we get to that conversation on the warrant, the town meeting warrant that we're gonna discuss tonight, we will have the uh, joining the Pioneer Valley Mosquito on that warrant. And then we can make a recommendation at that time to either join or not to join. Okay. Sounds good. Is that Crystal, David, that way you understand it? Yep. Yes. Yeah. All right. And we Where need do to do a vote for this, and then do we need a separate vote to join the district to join the district too? That's that's from the town meeting, so we'll okay. make a recommendation on that Warren article. Perfect, Dave. Uh, Jeff, uh, I know we had some public comment at the last meeting, but uh, one of the requirements is also that that we have availability for the public to comment specifically on this issue. So maybe before the vote, I don't know if you're ready to make a motion, but. Okay. Is there anyone else on uh, on uh, comment, public comment? I, I mean, we've gotten emails. We've got yeah. we we've, right. we've gotten um, individually. We've been, I'm sure, people probably talking. But is there anyone on the meeting right now that would like to further comment? Please uh, come on and make yourself known, and we'll let you talk. We had some public comments too last week. As a matter of fact, I remember we did. Yeah. Okay, without uh, hearing or seeing any uh, party that's, um, I will entertain a motion. A uh, motion to um, opt out of the state aerial spraying. I second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to opt out of state aerial spraying and for Jeff to forward Town of Sunderland's plan to the state. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. All right. Um, annual town meeting location. Jeff, what do you got on that? Um, I think just wanted to check to see, given the recent guidance from the governor and the fact that we're anticipating, or he's anticipating, ending the state of emergency three days after and uh, lifting the the mask guidance um, 
on Saturday, whether to consider um, in moving the location of town meeting to uh, the auditorium in Frontier, um, which would mean that regardless of whether hot, cold, rainy, hail, um, we would have, we would be able to have um, town meeting. It wouldn't be weather dependent. So I just at least wanted to raise that um, fully prepared to have it outdoors if that's still the preference and what people are more comfortable with, but. David Crystal Fox. Uh, and we can do it outside of the town bounds? Yes, we okay. voted that. When we, trying to remember. Yeah, it's it's a by we have a we 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 had written a bylaw, David, a few years well actually a lot of years ago that was yeah. accepted at town meeting. Okay. Um, so we wouldn't have enough room to socially distance in the elementary school then, right? Just because of the number of people we would expect and probably not enough space there. Yeah, I think the the gym is packed and I think the last day of school is the Friday before and so they've had to yeah. store a lot of stuff in the gym so that they could social distance so I don't think that um yep gotcha we'd be able to use that space on the 12th okay so, so my my only problem with my only problem going to frontier is the town of deerfield's having a town meeting that same day in the morning and they're outside they're not in the they're not in the they're not inside at frontier so so i i it i don't know why they're not going inside the building but I would say that's that usually that's that's enough for me not to go and in, wanting to go inside the building. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can just stick with our outdoor one and then, you know, we've got like a contingency date. Right. Well, either that either that or we have I mean, Jeff, have you looked at what it would take to have a tent put up? What about the tents behind the school? Um, oh, the pavilion? That's back there behind the elementary school or yeah. Um I, well, we and, can and get, again, I, I think some of that's on private property also. Oh, okay. I think they're and and the Mr. Ben? Yeah, we, we have four tents set up on our campus. Uh, actually, two right off off our campus. The two directly behind the school are both twenty by forty foot tents. They're, yeah, they're that, somewhat close to one another, um, yeah, so that's that could be an option. Yeah, I, I I think we're, you know, personally, I think. Thank you, Ben. I, I I think you know we had it there last year. You know, it it I I I can't predict the weather. But I, I think if we put in people inside a gym, if we don't have air conditioning in gym, you're going to have a same, the same concern about going inside also. So right, it'll be hot right now, I think, it, I think people can bring, bring in umbrellas, you know, if they want, you know, for shade, they can bring their own chair. Uh, and we can ask the moderator to make sure the meeting keeps going at, a, at an appropriate <laughs> a good pace. Clip. Hey, I mean, it did work out well. We had decent weather last year and everything, so. Yeah. I'm I'm okay. I'm personally okay where it's set up right now. Yeah, that's fine. And then we just deal with the contingency if we need to for the weather. We can do that, Crystal. Yep. I I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. But if you want to try to keep it the same day, can your contingency be to go over to the school under the tents? Yeah. I don't see why not. We could. We could. We, we could move, we could move that yeah absolutely well, we could just, do that yeah i mean then you don't have to come up with a separate day right you right. know so obviously could... driving hard lightning rain hailstorm you don't want to do it but at least for a drizzle or something you can get out right. of the weather and then we don't have to change the date and everything we've got the tent set up and hopefully it's the last time we're gonna have to worry about this so yeah. But we can do that. So, so Jeff, why don't we just continue like we've got it scheduled right now? Yep, and I'll work on the contingency for light rain. Okay. Um, do we want to talk anymore? Does town clerk have a thought on that, Jeff? Town clerk uh, or moderator? Uh, I, I think that both of them were 
we're flexible. Um, and I think that the feeling was some people may be more comfortable indoors and not exposed to the elements and others would be more comfortable outdoors and not exposed to other people indoors. <laughs> so yeah. um, I, I think it was, uh, they, they felt it was important to have the discussion and at least raise it given the, the recent guidance from the state. Um, but I, I don't think that there were strong opinions uh, one way or the other. Okay, so, so in other words, as with everything with COVID, there's no definitive answer. Exactly. <laughs> Consistency, you gotta say that. <laughs> it's consistent. All right. So so unless unless somebody but I, I think we have we do have an option if we have bad weather, so we can I think we'll stay like we are right now. It's important to have the discussion though. Yep. The uh, moving on, Sunderland Elementary School special education team leader position. Ben, you want to address that? Peter? Uh, Tom, I was going to start off on it. Okay. That's you. Excellent. Okay. Um, you asked the question that uh, uh, as a re result of the meeting we had at school committee last week where we decided to move ahead uh, with the uh, position of special ed uh, team leader. And uh, tied into that was the fact that we had one aid position that was uh, a person had resigned and, and by uh, not filling that, uh, we were uh, able to have, uh, the, the thought was that for roughly $30,000 that we could get this position that we've been wanting for some time, and it was in our budget request last year, and uh, obviously when things, when COVID hit, all that went to, by the boards, but the need hasn't gone away. In fact, the need's probably gotten more so. Um, what I'd like to do just to, to give you, you know, give you an honest and, and full response, um, just touch on a couple of things that I think are important to consider in this uh, situation. And uh, the first one is just to recognize the fact that we have uh, what I consider to be the best administration running the school that we've had in the 30 years that I've been involved in stuff in the town. Um, regarding financial management, uh, the last couple of years under Shelley, uh, reports are being filed on time. Uh, she has no problem dealing with five budgets. Uh, there's attention and visibility to all the special funds. There's attention to revenues, not just expenses. There's good communication and coordination with the town administrator and the accountant. And there's tight control on expenses and a purchase order system. Okay, so that's all under really good, really good uh, management there. Uh, secondly, regarding the school's performance in the past year and a quarter during COVID, uh, we've been ahead of other area school systems in returning to in-person learning. Uh, we've had really good communication and coordination with the unions, with the nursing staff, with the boards of health, with the families and the select boards to keep the schools as safe as possible. We have established protocols for dealing with COVID cases. We've had, I believe, four cases in the school and no in-school transmission. Uh, we upgraded the HVAC system last August, September. We've had no layoffs, so been no unemployment cost to the town and we've had a great coordination with the town in getting reimbursed for COVID expenses. Over the past, and then the financial stuff at, over the past year and a quarter of COVID is that thanks to money from CARES, from ESSER one from ESSER two, we've made the finances work despite a level funded budget from the town, despite minimal revenue from the school lunch program, and despite no revenue from the early childhood program. We put in a spending freeze for the last three months of fiscal year 20, and the last seven months of the current fiscal year. Our budget request for looking ahead for FY22 was 2.75% increase. And we have also have to deal with an out of district placement that's gonna cost us $80,000. And we're taking care of that within our own funds. And we also don't expect significant revenue from school lunch and early childhood. Nevertheless, we still have a good cushion in the school choice fund. The addition of a special ed team leader was requested in the FY21 budget. The need had existed well before that. It's not new. There's been a resignation in an aid position, as I mentioned. So the net cost is roughly the 60,000 of the new position, less the 28,000 saved 
from the A position or just over 30,000. 30, a thorough analysis of our costs for special ed services to school choice students in the current year suggests that school choice revenue this year will be roughly $75,000 higher than the number used in the state estimates back in January. 75,000 more than we're expected to be getting. That leaves a sizable cushion. And then back to your question, Tom. Okay, if the, if the numbers get worse, because you rightly say that we, having been through a couple of bad years, are supposed to be thinking you know, long-term, multi-year planning, okay? And in this case, if the numbers get worse, and they would have to get dramatically worse um, because of the cushions that we do have, the administration has shown by its actions that it understands and is sympathetic to the financial situation of the towns. It's not out to bust the towns. It wants to work with the towns. If we have to, we can eliminate the position after a year or two. But even in that case, this is still the right thing to do for the special ed kids who are getting educated right now. Okay, so again, I appreciate you asking the question. I ask questions of our administration all the time, even though it's questions about their job that they're supposed to be doing, but it's still good to ask questions. And at the same time, it's good to find out when they're answered, yeah, yeah, we got things under control. So I think in this case, in fact, I know in this case, we're doing the right thing. Now, I think Keith is on board and I, Keith, were you gonna to wanna to say something about the educational implications of this? Yeah, just in terms from the educational side, I think this is represents the, the biggest amount of heavy lifting that any administrator has to do. As a classroom teacher, I get typically about 15, 18 IEPs uh, a semester. Each IEP usually averages about 30 pages. So you're talking, I just as a single classroom teacher, I get five to 600 pages of IEP information and Sutherland Elementary has more than 12 to 15 uh, uh, IEP students. It's a tremendous amount of, of work and scheduling for each IEP meeting. You have to have an administrator, you have to have a classroom teacher, you have to have any of the psychologists, the speech and language pathologists, the parents, to try to get them all together is, is, is a um, logistical nightmare. On top of the fact that you have to provide coverage for the classroom teacher. So th this all happens in other districts with an assistant principal. And this is basically falling on, on Ben when he's trying to do other stuff. But at our last meeting, um, uh, Ben has been requesting this position for a couple of years and then the CPAC parents group requested this position. So when we have both parents and administration asking for a, a, a particular position, that's, that rings alarm bells for me that, that, that this is something we should take seriously. So I, and, and for the cost, I don't think this is, I think, I think this would be really, really beneficial for the district. And, and, and then the last thing would just be the, the legal ramifications. Every single step in the IEP process has legal uh, ramifications that we have to meet. So. Uh, I agree with Peter. And then from the educational side, I think this would really streamline things and make uh, Sunderland Elementary a lot more efficient. Tom, I don't know. I don't know whether that, you know, addresses your question. Um, it, it, it does. Well, and, and again, my, I, I like all, I mean, the backstory is important, um, but wasn't my intention. I, and I think I, I said that earlier, it wasn't my intention to to um, question the need of the position. I'm, I, I hope you understand. I'm not that's not I'm, that's not why I asked the question. My my question was is that a few years ago we we had a, 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 a uh, an override question fueled in great part because of the the use of choice money at Sunderland Elementary. Over, over the years where basically we were, choice was being used to run a lot of, a lot of the programs. So at that time, we had said that we, we the town, in this case, the school was going to come up with a, um, uh, a plan on how to use school choice money and, and to do so. so so it would say, okay, this this is how we plan to use school choice money. So the question, this question is, are we do we have a plan in place? Are we following it? And and I'm I'm more concerned about the the long term 
financial fiduciary responsibility and, and not if the position's needed. And, and if the, and, and I agree with, you know, Keith, you know, if you're, if the teachers and, and the parents, they're all saying that it's a necessary in administ administration think it's necessary. And that's fine. That's, I don't, that's, that's, I'm not questioning it. I'm saying, how do we pay for that? Or, and, and, and that's what I was really looking for. I was trying to look for, I was looking for that information because when, when we go to town meeting in a couple of weeks, we're going to be up there and, and you guys, people may ask you, well, what is our policy? How are we using school choice money? Because we, we, when you first made your presentation, we talked about it at that time. So, and again, it, it, again, I, I, I trust the administration. I trust the school committee to do what's right for our students. I'm just looking at our fiduciary responsibility. That's, Tom, that's Tom, if, I, if I could, uh, yeah. one thing I'd add to what I said would be that probably two or three meetings ago, I mean, two or three months ago at a school committee meeting, when we were discussing uh, levels of school choice that we're anticipating as a result of the budget that we submitted, uh, the question was raised by the administration, what is your goal for where you want to get to as far as school choice, which is pretty much the question you're asking. Yeah. And yeah. the response from the committee was, we would like to get back to the position where we have a full year of school choice in reserve so that we we spend what we've earned you know already in the past okay yeah. and so that was the guidance that we gave to shelly and darius okay yeah. we Absolutely. are in a position now um obviously there's a whole lot of things keep changing and that's just the world we live in um but you know i would say we're roughly in a position where we have about half that okay on a, on a going forward basis um you could say well how do you mean i mean i even look at that and i say how do we manage to get here given the fact that it was down you know it was like rock bottom a couple of years ago and one of the things that we have done that has a, had a significant difference is that we have really uh we put in procedures to essentially audit okay all the school choice kids that we have going in and going out okay to make sure that we're getting full credit for everything that we're entitled to by the law and so we're checking to make sure in terms of just you know at what date did this student start being a school choice what date did it end you know where did the where did the family live making sure that they qualify you know again whether it's in or out making sure in particular that for see we get reimbursed for school choice students coming in we get reimbursed for special ed costs. Okay, we don't pay those. Those get reimbursed, you know, through the payments from the state. They bill the sending town and they credit it to our account. And we've done, we've changed our procedures for auditing that. So, you know, it was like this time last year. Okay, also there was a big jump in the amount of, of, of uh, special ed reimbursements that it turned out we were getting at the end of last year. And the same thing's going to be the case this year. So. Um, I think that there have been, we both have uh, the, the, the policy that you referred to is to get back to a full year in reserve, okay? And the means to get there, part of it is just to keep improving your management and tighten up your procedures so that you get the benefit of everything you're entitled to. And we're doing way better on that than we used to. Uh, this Greg Gottschalk. Uh, chair of the uh, you, Sunderland Elementary School Committee. May I speak? Yeah. Is it Greg? Yes. I got you, Greg. I see your little line on. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to agree with uh, with what has been said by Peter and Ben and Keith. Um, I worry a little bit when I hear that somehow choice money got us into financial problem that caused an override. Uh, Choice money is a revenue source, and revenue sources don't cause extra money to be spent. There was a pile of money choice money. Oh, we lost Greg. Oh, you lost it? Hey, Greg. Yeah, you cut out a little. Greg, could you could you start over again? You, you uh, cut out. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I... I get concerned when I hear that uh, 
that somehow it's perceived that a choice policy caused an override. Uh, choice is money that comes in, and if you keep enough in reserve year over year, that, then uh, it can be used to smooth out bumps in the road. Uh, the, the cause of the override was we get into that reserve in order to uh, keep our, our annual ask down. Um, and so it was when that account hit rock bottom, we were first to override it. But we've had to make changes, whether on the more expense side uh, earlier, had it not been for choice. So I, I, I do agree with, uh, I, I think that was a moment that was one where both the select board and the uh, school committee came to understand that, yeah, getting a, an annual percentage increase by eating into school choice uh, year over year is, is taking the shock absorbers out of the car. But uh, that's only if you wanted to add to what was already said. Thank you. I think we lost your audio, Tom. Like I can hear you in the room, but I can't hear you over the. No. You got the problem I had last week. <laughs> It was fine earlier. Tom, do you want to try signing off and then joining again? Sorry. <laughs> we haven't forgot about your question, Keith. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Yeah. Maybe on the behalf of the school committee, we'd like to welcome Crystal to the select board. Uh, <laughs> uh, hi, Crystal. Hi. Uh, glad to have you involved, and you'll get to know all of us uh, a lot better as time goes on. Thanks. So next week, David, it'll be your turn to be unintentionally muted yes we were with a rotating mute <laughs> well, i feel better now that it's not yeah. just me <laughs> uh, kind of like our version of california's rolling blackouts huh <clears throat> well he must be coming back on because i see his name on there now <laughs> nope. No sound. Crystal. Uh, oh, now, now we got you. There you go. <laughs> you just had to yell. Right, so where I was before. Jess, did you want to add anything? I think my colleagues have covered a lot of it. Um, just that I, I think it's also important to contextualize that part of the reason we need this position is that our elementary school has been experiencing increasing needs every year with special education. So in in that sense, it's not related to, you know, the realignment with, with school choice and the override two years ago that you're thinking of. Um, we learned from CPAC just last week that 34% of our students are on IEPs right now, which is a shockingly high number. I think the state assumes that we've got like 13 and a half percent or 15%, something like that in special education. So we really have a lot of needs. And I'm also concerned about um, that right now not having this position is putting a lot of extra work on our teachers who have already had an extraordinary unthinkable year. Um, even if in the worst case scenario, we couldn't fund this position again a year from now, this is something we can do to support the teachers and thank them for what they've done this year. But yeah. Thank you. All right. Keith? Yeah, just to speak to the override question, just my my like thousand or thousand foot view of it is, I kind of remember that 
we presented it as a multi-year process that we were going to have to, to put ourselves in a good position. And part of it was digging ourselves out of the hole of continually using school choice to try to reduce the amount of ask for the town. But then the second part is building up reserves and the override eliminated the whole but i think the pressure we're feeling now is the building back up of, of reserves putting us up into a um a year in arrears so just for the override question i think that's where we're at now at least from my memory and, and again um i I'll, i agree 100 percent with what you just said um there was a hole um and we just we don't want to find ourselves there again and we it, it is it is a partnership it's a you know it is a three-way partnership and 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 there has to be the revenue the revenue and the expense side of it and and not so you look at revenue expense and you actually look at needs and and in when when a need is identified then it's how we, we, our team, try to fund that need. And right, right now, and, and sometimes we all, we all have to make, we all have to make very difficult choices on how to fund things. And I think that that's the kind of discussion that we have to have, to have how to, and, and how do you build up the reserves? How do you dig out those, out of the things is you have to have those conversations and you can't you can't be um afraid to have those conversations and i think that's what we're trying to do right now uh, and again i don't my i know for myself i didn't i don't question the need of having the position and i think i told that to peter that that's my my thing is how we fund it and how do we fund it going forward and and is it, it is it this year the best it, i mean it's convenient I'll use it you're convenient to use tool choice right now. We know next year sixty thousand dollars if you look at a you know adding sixty thousand dollars onto the budget, well, and you and you, we've had this discussion for for a number of years now, you know our our next year our growth our our new growth we know right now is going to be about one hundred and fifty to one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. So if you just add sixty sixty thousand to it, it puts us in a for the rest of the town, how do we deal with the rest of the town? So, and again, I, again, I just, I didn't, I didn't think we needed a, a long discussion, but just it was important to have that discussion. So it'll be a continuation over the next year, you know, going looking at, at not only FY22 but also FY23 and 24 and going forward. So I, I actually, I, I, I just wanted to have that discussion. I'm glad we we're, we're, you know, Jeff, Keith, Greg. Peter and Ben, I'm glad we're all we're all here so that we can talk about that. That's good. good. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate. It. I mean, we got to keep talking. Uh, you know, Peter. It, it, it again. It, the more we, the more information that we shared, right? Uh, that the more the town, the town. You know, we, we're start, we're we're painting a picture. You know, we and we paint one 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 one. You know, paint a picture just one color at a time. So that's what we're trying to do. Good. Thanks. Okay, guys. Okay. Thank you all. All right, um, Jeff, what do we got for this frontier budget amendment? So um, I think I mentioned this last week or two weeks ago. Um, the budget hasn't changed, but basically the frontier uh, track project, I believe came in um, under budget and so they wanted to am amend the use of excess and deficiency funds to address some of the um, projects and it allowed them to uh, not request, uh, there would, had been a capital request for duct cleaning in the gymnasium and auditorium and replacing the uh, curtain in the auditorium. Um, and so basically it's a budget amendment um, that doesn't, really affect the, the bottom line anyway, but um, they did send it to the select board because the budget did change. And I can pull it up on screen if that would be helpful. No, I, I basically, 
When you have a regional school district, regional school districts are, are governed by Master and Law Chapter 71. And part of, and pa part of Chapter 71 um, allows, allows a regional school district to use what they call an E&D, Excess and Deficiency Fund. We would say that E&D is our, is our free cash stabilization account. But, and also the state tells the school districts, regional school districts, what their maximum amount of their E, their E and D accounts can be. And if it goes over a certain amount, they are required to, to have that money go back to the, to the cities or towns that, that provided it. What, what one of the requirements is that when the school uses E and D money, it needs to notify the the communities that are that are on, uh, that are in involved that are involved. In this case, the towns of Sundown, Deerfield, Whiteley, and Conway. If the towns want, we could go and call for a special town meeting, and we we could discuss and and either vote yes or no on their use of the E and D account for whatever they're using. In this case. I personally don't see that we would need to because they are working within their budget and they're just taking the money and reapplying it because they were able to save money on, on portions of their other project and to utilize it in required work at Frontier. So to me, it's, it, it, it's, it's different than saying, okay, we had, we have uh, X amount of, money in it and we just want to spend more money. That's not what they're saying. They're just reappropriating the use of that money to another another item. So I personally don't, I'm fine with the notification and I don't believe that the town should go through the expense of a special town meeting to discuss that personally. David, you and Crystal, thoughts? Yeah, I would agree. Cause it, like you said, it's just a, a changing of sources and use of funds, not the bottom line. and that's a, a much, you know, that's a totally different thing. And this yeah. is not, this doesn't merit that kind of. Crystal, what are you, I, and I know this may, it's still new, but. Yeah. I mean, it sounds reasonable to me that, you know, that's the, the expense of a town meeting, the, ex, you know, the hassle of everything with that. I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, just an accounting change, really, when you think right. about it. And, but I Can also I think. Question? Sure, go ahead, Caitlin. Is it a significant amount? I didn't hear the amount. Jeff, you want to want to uh, tell the you want to let her know how much are going to be moved around? Um, they're reallocating one hundred and fifty-eight thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars. That's a significant amount when we're looking for fifty thousand for. It wouldn't come back, but but you don't forget it wouldn't come back. Oh, as, we'd get a quarter of that. Yeah. Okay. And and, and after so, town meeting. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, that makes a little uh, okay. I'm just thinking, you know, I mean, when we're so close <laughs> on our. Well, but don't don't forget also, Caitlin, is that if they don't spend the money, they still get to keep it in their E and D account. It doesn't right. necessarily come back to the town. It just we wouldn't we wouldn't it would they couldn't spend it on that particular item or those particular items. Okay, all right. Thank you. That's very helpful. No, Thank that you. was no good question. Good okay. question, Keith. Yeah, I just wanted to, so the E and D. I think it's they're allowed to keep five percent of the operating budget is is what they're allowed yep. to keep, and then. Um, uh, the regional school committee, I just want to say, does put a lot of thought into what they're going to do with that. Because a lot, some of it is like snow removal. It's in all the, the budgeting funds. Whenever there's anything left over, it falls into there. Like Tommy mentioned, free cash. Um, they're very thoughtful about how they're going to use that money and returning as much to the town or reducing um, the overall ask for the towns as much as possible without presenting, again, like we've done in the past, like a false budget, just trying to reduce the 
to ask without actually really showing what the need is, but they're really thoughtful about what they're doing. And I think this is a, a another good element of the, the communication that is supposed to happen, that they're letting the towns know that this is happening. And, and actually, that's a good point. And, and if I could just expand on, so so in, in some regional districts, what, what they found is that if, if like for us to use money out of our free cash or stabilization, we need to go to a town meeting and our our legislative body who's at, which happens at town meeting, our citizens vote to say yay or nay to that expenditure of money. And basically when the money is used from E&D, if you, if you look at Frontier's budget, if you look in their revenue budget, that they put together for revenue, Frontier for many, many years now will have in it, they'll identify E&D funds being used. So, so they're, they're telling us, they're telling us, and, and when we talk June 12th, and if you look at their revenue expenditures or revenue sheet, they will show that they are using X amount of dollars from E&D, apply it to next year's budget. It's pretty much like all school budgets. Once you once you once you put down that whatever that budget is, eight million dollars, nine million dollars, basically the school has the ability to use that money however they deem fit to pay whatever they need to pay. But if you did not say that you're going to use that E and D account, that money, then they would have to utilize you. That's when they would say, Oh, by the way, we didn't think we we're going to use any E and D last year, but this year, but we actually have to use some of the E and D money. We're going to use a hundred thousand dollars, one hundred fifty-eight thousand dollars to do these other things, and we would say, "Yeah, but you didn't tell us you're going to use that E and D money to to be utilized at all, and now you're spending, so you're really increasing your budget by one hundred fifty-eight thousand dollars." So that's where the conversations were started. But Frontier's already told us they're going to be using that. They were going to use $158,000. They're just going to reappropriate to a different way. So that's that's why I feel pretty good about that. All right. So so I I David Crystal both we don't we don't think that they we need to do a town meeting then. Is that yeah, what I'm hearing? Yep, yeah, I would agree. Okay. So Jeff, no action, no action, but we have informed our town that, so that's good. So that's the best thing is we, we let people know that we're, that we are going to use that money. That's, that's what we're trying to accomplish. Good. All right. Lori Smith, front and center. I'm here. <laughs> so what are you going to tell us today? Zero. You've been waiting a long time to say that. Hey. <laughs> we have all been waiting a long time to hear that number. Nice. Yes, zero. I haven't had new case presented to me since May 5th. I feel like you should have like a balloon drop going behind you or something. You <laughs> <know>? For sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy. Um, you know, it's a lot of hard work by everybody, but it's a good thing. It's awesome. So I, I just, uh, Jeff, you want to you give the latest on uh, what's available? Um, there, there, and we do have homebound people, people that can't get, get vaccinations. Um, the FERCOG and the state are working on that. So if, if you do, uh, if you are homebound or know somebody that is homebound that, that can't, we, if you go to our webpage, the town's webpage and or the FERCOG's webpage, they have information that, um, um, contact information that, that you can arrange for, uh, a mobile, vaccination come to your site and, and they'll actually give the homebound people. I, I think we're basically, we've taken care of a lot of, of homebound. I hope, I hope we've done all of them that want it, but if you are homebound and you want a uh, vaccination, you can go on our site and uh, we have information for you um, to look, to look at, to get in contact for arrangement of that. So Caitlin. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the statistics right now. I pulled them up for, um, it's, it's the, uh, the 20th. And uh, the, purport, the fully vaccinated 
individuals per capita for Sunderland for the uh, 65 to 70 year olds is 80% of our town. So that's pretty good. Um, then that's fully vaccinated. So um, for 50 to 64 year olds, it's 69%. For uh, 30 to 49, it's 56%. For 20 to 29, it's 28%. And for 16 to 19 year olds, it's 54%. For 75 and older, it's 62%. And the numbers, it's 122 people of 75 and older, 313 of 65 to 74, 400, the largest number is 469 people. And that's the uh, 50 to 64 range, age range. So that's really quite, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> um, as far as percentages, 80% of our older people being back full, fully vaccinated you know, um, it is, is good. I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Um, we're getting the word out. So um, it just kind of goes to show, you know, Lori and all of our, where we've put our resources in education. And, you know, Tom, you have made more than your share of phone calls <laughs> and emails and got people moving and got people to where they needed to be. And that really needs to be highlighted and applauded because um, we had people who were frightened and didn't feel that they could get vaccinated. And they reached out personally to our members of our boards. You know, I got phone calls from people that were homebound and in wheelchairs and stuff. And Tom got personal phone calls. And it's just neat how in a small community, you get things done. And I'm kind of proud of that. You know, uh, you look at the, the number we have of people, period. You know, it, it, it's, it's not huge. And I just love the fact that most of us are vaccinated. <laughs> So I thought that it was important to get that out. I, I just think the most, Caitlin, I, I agree 100%. I, I think it's important that we, when the, when there was a need for people to stand up to work the clinics, yeah. Um, all of a sudden we said one thing to the town clerk and the next thing I know, the town oh clerk has, the, the town clerk has 50 volunteers and 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 when and, Wendy and, calls, <laughs> people call. Yeah, if, you, if you see if you see one four four two as a call caller ID, <laughs> don't answer the phone. <laughs> but uh, I I would say, but but what I'm trying to say is that the town of Sunderland um, stepped up in, in 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 all phases, and and there there was a tremendous um, outpouring of of assistance from a, so many different people. And that that went and got, you know, qualified to. I, I mean, believe it. You know, we have a town administrator, and I I I've worked at a few clinics, and I have only seen one town administrator there, and that was our town administrator. He he was there. He worked a clinic, and he he took the time to become a, an MRC qualified so that he could run a computer that doesn't work very well, but. Uh, and, and and so so I I'm happy, but but what I what I will say is that if people have if people have still um, a desire to get a, a shot a, a vaccination or know someone to get a vaccination, we we had we just had uh, last Thursday we had a vac vaccination clinic up at GCC that that did and a drive through that did seven hundred ninety seven seven hundred ninety six seven hundred ninety seven throughout the day. And, and so there's still people out there, a lot of young people. Yeah. Um, and, and, but the, the, there is vaccine out there. Um, and again, you, everyone has to make their own choice if they get the vaccinated or not. I'm not telling anybody to go out, but if, if you're thinking about getting it, 
talk to your talk to your healthcare provider and and make an informed decision you know make an informed decision see unlike you i would urge people to get the vaccine yeah, and absolutely. you know that's my position it's safe it, it's um better for your elder relatives the elder people even though you may be strong and healthy you can still pass it on so for the younger people i will give a very quick very quick anecdote is i was on the phone with an elderly gentleman and he wanted to know if i was friends with that town clerk wendy do i know that town clerk wendy and i said yes i'm friends with her oh okay he'll talk to me <laughs> so that got me talking to an older gentleman so i know i got an in so yeah, thank you yeah. and thank everybody for really you know you, you can't beat a pandemic on your own so yeah. thank you and thank you Lori, for holding it together caitlin. Yeah. you too good thank you caitlin thank you Lori. anything else Lori? Maybe sometime in the very near future, we don't have to have you on every week, huh, Lori? Wouldn't that be exciting? <laughs> <laughs> Couple more weeks, okay, kid? Thanks, Kate. Yeah. Thank you. All right, next. Uh, David, uh, Crystal, you want any Slackman updates, David? Um, I don't have any tonight, right now. Okay. Crystal? I'm all set. I don't have anything. All right. Um, I, I do want to remind people that unfortunately, um, we will not be able to have a, a Memorial Day parade per se, but we will be having a service at the, uh, at the cemetery. P people are invited to, main, uh, to attend. Uh, social distancing is required. Masks will be required. Um, shortly after the uh, the next day, I think the governor is changing a, a lot of the things. But our Friday night was going to be a little different. We'll still be hold on held under the protocol. So I, I would invite those that would like to. Uh, we will basically Jim from the rec department is putting together a very similar um, uh, program um, where we honor the veterans and not only honor them but also. Uh, Recall, remember their uh, their service and what they've been through. So that will be starting. There'll be a thing here um, at six o'clock and down at the cemetery. So if you'd like to attend, again you can. Social distance, wear your mask, please. Um, Jeff, town administrator updates. Yeah. So um, <laughs> following up on the Memorial Day ceremony. As I mentioned earlier, the gymnasium at the elementary school is packed with stuff. That is the rain location for the Memorial Day ceremony. So I just wanted to mention that if there is uh, poor weather, there is no backup location this year. Okay. Um, at least not available at the elementary school. So, um, okay. That was something that was brought to my attention. Thank you. That, um, along those lines, also, uh, as of right now, once the state of emergency is rescinded on June 15th, we will no longer be allowed to meet like this remotely. Um, and that goes for all boards and committees. I know the legislature is working on adding some flexibility uh, for remote meetings to possibly continue. But I did want to mention that, you know, if that doesn't happen, um, we, for all the listeners out there, people who have been enjoying Zoom, um, it may be, and we'll let people know ahead of time, but um, it may be that you have to come in or watch on TV. It may not be Zoomed. Um, an update on the Riverside restrooms. So we had a professional cost estimator look at the restrooms. Uh, a couple months ago, we had shown some plans, I think it was in March, with four stalls, um, two of them being ADA accessible. Unfortunately, due to, I guess my understanding is that it, it's due to shipping issues. Um, 
construction material prices have skyrocketed. So when we, we wanted to get a professional cost estimate, it came back for that design and it was uh, not feasible is the best way to put it. So <laughs> we're now looking at a two stall uh, design that is within the budget. Um, each room, which would still at, for now be gender neutral, um, each stall would have a sit down uh, toilet and then a urinal as well and sinks and things like that. Um, we're also talking about upgrading the roof and, and the siding to match the other buildings, but I just wanted to raise that point. Um, and then the last thing is North Main Street. Um, the construction schedule is a little bit behind by about three weeks. Um, we've posted an update to the schedule on the website. Uh, I believe they were looking at around October 20th for full beneficial use. Um, and now they're looking at November 11th. Um, so a little bit later, but they were out uh, on Friday and they did put a temporary patch over the, the dirt. Um, so hopefully that increases safety and makes people feel a little bit more comfortable about staying in their lane. So Jeff, have they talked about any additional expenses yet? Mm -hmm. Um, well, so MassDOT is going to cover up to 110% of the contract price, and we have not reached that 110% threshold. Uh, we continue to have conversations with, with MassDOT and uh, the contractors about it, but we have not been approached um, it, it uh, they haven't asked us for any additional funds. Okay, are are they are they uh, are they are are they having regularly scheduled meetings where they're taking down minutes? Uh, Ma Masta and Baltazar. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. Hmm. All right, we'd like, and, and I will just remind Mass Dot if they want us to pay, we should be seeing minutes also. Other discussion. Okay. Yep. Thank you. That's all I had for updates. Thank you, Jeff. All right, Crystal, David, anything else before we start into our next uh, highly anticipated review of the annual town meeting warrant? No, let's dive right into the excitement. All righty. So, Jeffrey, we're all set with uh, Article 1. Article 2 is the... Yes. Uh, is a seventeen thousand one hundred forty-four dollars for the uh, payment of uh, fiscal fiscal year prior fiscal year billing? Okay, David. Should we have a recommendation on that? I mean, a vote of recommendation. Uh, let's see. Uh, recommend on that one. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion made, seconded to uh, to uh, recommend the payment of seventeen thousand one hundred forty-four dollars and thirty-nine cents to uh, pass fiscal year bills. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero on that, Jeff. All right. We uh, we don't offer a recommendation on Article Three. So we can take that one right out of there. Article four, what's article four? Is that the budget? Yes. Um, we'll uh, hold on. Uh, right now we'll hold on that. Article five. That's Some capital money. budget. The capital budget. Did we want to? We we've already voted on that three zero. Oh, so we're all set with that one. Article six. Raise approach funds. Upgrade the emergency radio system. Jeff, you were gonna you're gonna put in numbers on this one if we needed to. 
Uh, yeah, it's, uh, um, I think it's 23,000 plus or minus, I think almost, almost 24,000. 24,000. And you're look and, and I would say we're probably taking that from stabilization because it's, uh, I think that's what we talked about before, right? Rather than free cash. Yeah, I would say stabilization on that. Okay, entertain a motion. Uh, motion. Second. We have motion made and second to uh, recommend the uh, appropriation of $24,000 for, well, the sum to be turned to be determined um, from stabilization okay. for the radio network. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I was hanging out. Article number seven the uh, payback on the, the Sunland Elementary School employees of approximately. $49,000, Jeff? Yes, exactly. Yep. And how, how are you uh, looking at this being paid? Uh, right now, I was anticipating that would be free cash. OK. OK, motion on a recommendation. Motion. A second. Discussion, is there any discussion on that, Jeff? No, I'm, if, if you think that would be a, a stabilization, again, because it's a one-time expense. No, I, I, I think it is a one-time ex expense, but I, that, we, we, we had plugged in the 40, we had plugged in that 49,000 out of the free cash anyways, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So we have a motion made and seconded. Utilizing free cash, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Three, three zero, Jeff. Next is article number eight, which is the recommendation to, uh, to fund the purchase of new weapons for the police department, replacement firearms. And they're talking about what, about $9,000? Uh, yes. Yep. The police chief is going to try and refine that down before town meeting, but. Okay. And your recommendation for funding, Jeff? Uh, free cash as well. That one. Okay. Oh, does it, oh, does it say from stabilization on there though? No. It's a, if it goes to stabilization, we'd use a two thirds vote, Dave. Uh, okay. Sorry. That's okay. Okay, any discussion on that? Nope. All right, here, no discussion on Article 8. All those in favor of recommendation for the use for the per replacement of firearms for the police department signify by saying aye. 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 That's been on for a few years now. So, Article 9 is a mosquito control. All right, any discussion on that? Here, no discussion on that, and that's a five. Jeff, I mean, they, they recommend they recommend five thousand dollars, but maybe uh, can we talk to them about? I think I'd like to appropriate three thousand dollars for that this year to start up. Okay. <laughs> Certainly talk to them about that. All right. So David and, and uh, Chris, I'd like to start off with a three thousand dollar. See what it gets us for the first year. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. We have a make a motion on that. I have a motion to join the mosquito district. I'll second it. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. Article 10 is, that's three zero, Jeff. Article 10 is the uh, um, 
setting the values for the inspectional services. So can Jeff, that right now the plumbing inspector is down for five thousand dollars. What what happens if he uh, takes in enough money to get paid seven thousand? Can he do that? Uh, no. Nope. Um, that that's the maximum that is allowed to get spent. So I did. I think it was three thousand, and I I uh, increased it to. 5,000, I increased the wiring inspector. I think it was from 9,000 to 15,000 to try and avoid that. Yep. Um, looking at the previous years, um, trying to pull it up quickly. Um, looking at the past couple of years, it's hard because North 116 flats was in there, yep. but, you know, for the plumbing, it ranged from a low of about 2000 in fiscal year 18 to a high of 7,800 in fiscal year 20. Wiring inspector seemed to be a low of about 11,000 to a high of 50,000, almost 50,000. So I tried to take the average. Um, and th that's how I got to those numbers. And did you talk to these, did you, did you talk to the inspectors and, and uh, discuss the numbers that you put down? Um, I, I talked to some of them. I wasn't able to get in touch. You want me to reach out and make sure that they're comfortable and that's what they recommend before? Yeah, can we, we'll, 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 we'll review this. Can we review this next week, please? Yep. Okay. Dave, is that okay? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, article uh, 11 is the 200,000 for the, uh, the school playground. That's out of CPA, right? Yep. Yep, the CPA. All right, I'll entertain a motion to recommend. Motion to recommend Article 12. I'll second. I have a motion made and seconded to Article, uh, sorry, sorry, 11. Article 11. Article 11. <laughs> yeah. I just realized that as soon as you said that, I was like, oh. Article 11. All right. Any, any discussion? All those, all right, I don't hear no discussion. All those in favor of the uh, 200,000 from CPA for the childhood playground at the school, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. Article 12 is. It's the Graves Library, right? Rest Graves Foundation Library. repointing. Yep. 69,000 for the, uh, the work at the maintaining the building, the Grave Library building. Make a motion on Article 12. Make a motion on Article 12. I'll second it. And second, any discussion? Without hearing any discussion, all those in favor of the use of 69,000 at the Graves to, uh, for restoration of the, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. three zero. Jeff, we're going to probably, yeah, we'll probably have to look at the Gray's building and use going forward also. Yep. Article 13 is another CPA article, the use of $26,000 for Riverside field improvements. Jeff, what's that going to be in that? Uh, that's for the irrigation system for the soccer okay. field. Okay. Long, long overdue on that one. But uh, we have a recommendation, a vote to, a motion to recommend. Uh, motion recommended. Just a quick discussion. Yeah, I'm just discussion. I'm just wondering, like, if we're going to irrigate it more, do we have to then adjust our mowing at all? Uh, 
I think we'll have to see. Yeah, I think like because it'll be the first year it'll be in, but I, just more of a like a something to think about going forwards because it might, you know, it might affect that a little bit more frequently. More like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because well, we're taking better I would, care of it. I would also work with. I would think Jeff would work with Frontier also to see, uh, you know, if Frontier still using it for their soccer program and they're going to be on a nice field, maybe they would uh, pony up some money also for maintaining the field. Yep. You know, maybe. Never know. Well, you never something know. Something to talk about. That's something to talk about. So, artists, artist, but that only goes in if case they do find water. They first are going to find water before we do That's that. That's right. They got to drill a well, right, for it. So. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, we have motion made and seconded on Article 13. Any other discussion? Without hearing any discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Article 14. To see if the town will vote to appropriate sum of twenty thousand dollars from CPA to do the re Riverside Park restoration, and Jeff, that's what you were just talking about. Uh, this is for yeah, the restroom exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Motion on that. Motion Second made that. and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero. Jeff, are these good numbers now? Um. Uh, the 25,300 is good. Um, <coughs> not, not exactly clear on what the state match is going to be this year. Um, so we're still working on that. Okay. Um, but I, I'm hoping to sit down with uh, Jennifer Uncles and, and Dave Nordstrom this week to confirm that these are the right numbers. So do you want to hold off on one week on this one? Uh, we, we can, um, you know, it, I, I don't know, I don't know if we'll be, if my understanding is we need to reach out to the state to confirm what the, what the match is. So I don't know that we'll have a number next week, but. So, so then, then we could do this and we can just make a, we can amend amend it at that time. Is that okay? If yeah, it changes. Yeah, in, in the motion or yeah. yeah. We can we yeah. can amend it in the motion. Okay. All right. I entertain a motion for article 15. Motion for article 15. Second. I have a motion made and seconded. And this is uh, the 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 numbers that how how we make CPA the funding work. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero on that one. Article sixteen is to see if the town will vote for Master General Law Chapter Forty Section Fifty O Eight to impose municipal charge liens on real property located in the town of Sunderland. This is basically coming from the Board of Health. They're looking to do this, Jeff? Correct. Okay. Any comp any any more discussion on this one? I mean we talked about it before. Yep. Uh, a lot. Yes. I think we're okay. good. I'll All make right. a motion on that one. Yeah, I'll motion second. made and seconded on Article 16. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. Article seventeen. Well, we usually don't recommend, right? Just the yeah, just yeah. That that one we don't. Jeff, we're not going to make have a recommendation on that, okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Article eighteen. Personal bylaw, Jeff. Uh, David, you want to talk about that? Yeah, this one, um, we're adjusting it so that a regular full-time employee with less than a year of service can take a week out of their two after they've basically completed. So you get, after you completed half a year of your service, you get to take half of your vacation. So, so it's, it's not, it's, it's just when the person can use a, 
the yeah, timeline. Exactly. It's they don't get really any more. Them. Yeah, it's not. I, I think this is just of oh, its fear. Yeah. Because you've essentially accrued it. So, yeah. Crystal, thoughts? Oh, I think Jeff had a question. Yeah, Jeff. Uh, I just wanted to point out that I believe you voted to recommend this last time as well oh, as we the did. consent articles. Okay. Yeah. We okay. did. So, I mean, you could certainly revisit, but. Yep, we did. And the consent. All right, oh, so we're all set with that. All right. And so we're basically done with this. Next week, the budget, Jeff? Yep. Next week, the budget. And then what was uh, Article 10? Okay. Article 4 and 10. Closing in. What do you think? Anybody else want to add anything? Crystal, you want to do something? Crystal, you want to make a motion? Motion that we end? <laughs> <laughs> you asked her. <laughs> Crystal's, asked making you, a motion. Right? Crystal's making a motion to, to uh, <laughs> adjourn. David? Uh oh, Jeff's going to Jeff's oh. gonna say something. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, we talked about Memorial Day, but town offices are going to be closed a week from today. It, um, because of Memorial Day. And I, I guess I just wanted to confirm that the select board, you do want to meet next Tuesday, the first, right? Yep. Yeah. I think that we got to do our, we got to, I think we're going to talk about the budget, the, the final review of the budget. Yep. So what I would do is make, I, I wouldn't put anything else on the agenda except for the budget. So we can dedicate the time to the budget. And, and if there's something that's actually an emergency that comes up, so that, that article and I mean, the budget article we can discuss and we can also discuss uh, the recommendation I think on article 10 that we have to make. And then uh, then we can, uh, at that point there are following, the following week, we can, uh, anything that comes up and then town meeting, okay? Any other stuff? So Crystal made a motion to adjourn. David, second. Second. See? Any additional? Without hearing any additional, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And before I declare, so I'd just like to thank the uh, front uh, Sunland School Committee uh, and Ben for coming tonight and to have that to have that discussion. And again, it's important that we, we try to keep everything out front so uh, every, we can keep our town residents informed. Jeff, I had a 3-0 vote to adjourn. Please adjourn us at uh, 8.02. See you next week, guys. Good night, Have a happy Memorial Day.